Welcome back, I'm Jen Woodhouse and our guest bedroom closets have gotten a total makeover. It cost a little over a hundred bucks and it took just one weekend to complete. So keep watching and I'll show you how I did it. You might remember this room from our previous videos where we renovated both the guest bedroom and the ensuite bathroom. I'll link those videos below so you can see this transformation from start to finish. Now the last thing we had to do to call this room done was give these closets a little love. But first, let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Don't judge me. Hey, this is before footage of the guest bedroom closet makeover. The dimensions of these closets are about 36 inches wide by 24 inches deep. We've got basic wire shelving in here, not much functionality, a lot of wasted space, and plenty of disorganization. But hey, it's in our spare room, so we rarely ever go in here out of sight, out of mind. And do you think I'm a pillow hoarder? Don't answer that. So we rip these wire shelves out, patch the holes, and then put some custom wood shelving in. We kept a hanging rod in one of the closets so that our guests have a place to hang their coats and other long garments. And then we put shelves in the other closet. Have you done a closet renovation? Tell me in the comments section. I would love to know how it turned out. And if you think you need a fancy workshop with big power tools for this project, you don't. I'll show you how you can achieve the same results with small handheld power tools that fit in your kitchen drawer. This closet makeover was made possible by the Home Depot. No matter the project, the Home Depot has the tools to help. They've got thousands of how-to guides for DIY projects and home improvements on their website, as well as on their incredible mobile app. I was able to find a ton of ideas and inspiration from their closet organization guides. I don't go without using this app multiple times throughout my projects. It is so helpful and super convenient. In addition to the how-to guides, I can shop their massive inventory straight from the app, order products online, and either pick it up in store from a pickup locker or from the customer service desk, or I can select curbside pickup, which is my favorite. Hi. After placing my order, I get a text and email notification letting me know my order is ready. So then I go and park in the designated curbside pickup location, check in on my phone, and my order is delivered straight to my car. It doesn't get any easier than that. Now, I mentioned just a few of its features, but there's so much more that this powerful little app can do. So I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can take a closer look. Okay, so the first thing I did was clear out the closet. I took everything out and then put it in the hallway where my entire family can trip over it. <laughs> It'll be in everyone's way, which gives me motivation to finish the project quickly. That's a pro tip for you. <laughs> then I removed the wire shelving. You can use a cordless drill or a screwdriver if you're a glutton for punishment. You can also pick up one of these battery powered screwdrivers. They're really handy to have just for quick fixes around the house. You'll likely have big holes in the walls left by the wall anchors like I did, so we'll have to patch and fill that. I like to use this color changing spackle. It goes on pink and turns white when it's dry. I overfill it, wait till it dries, and then I sand it down flush. Now, if you wanna do something fun like add wallpaper or paint a stencil or something, now is the time to do it. I installed wallpaper inside my hall closets and it's so cute. But because these are occasional closets, I'm not gonna go through the effort this time, but it's a fun little surprise if you wanna be extra. I picked up a closet rod, pole sockets, some one by twos for trim, and some melamine shelves from the Home Depot. It cost about $120 for all of the materials. These shelves are pretty strong, but easy to cut to size. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I love this foam board insulation trick. I use it as a cutting mat. I measured and marked where I wanted to cut the shelves and then made the cuts with my track saw. Now you can make these cuts with a table saw, a circular saw, or with this mini saw. It's called a Dremel Saw Max, and it's so small that it'll fit in your kitchen drawer. 
It's best to clamp a straight edge guide so that your cuts are straight, or you can live on the edge like I do and just freehand it. I'll link all of the tools and materials below. These shelves will be supported by 1x2 cleats that are screwed into the walls. Measure, mark, and cut the 1x2s to length, find the studs in the wall, and then screw the 1x2s to the studs. Make sure to check for level. I like to drive in one screw first, then check for level, then drive in the remaining screws. I ran a 1x2 across the back as well as on both sides. Let's talk briefly about span limit. Span limit is the maximum distance apart that you can place the shelving supports before the shelf is at risk for sagging. Span limits can range from 18 inches to almost 5 feet long depending on the material you choose and the load it'll carry. Since this is a bedroom closet, we're not going to be loading these shelves up with a set of heavy encyclopedias or anything like that. It's going to hold extra linens, various and sundry items, so I'm not too concerned about exceeding the span limit. And because these shelves won't bear a heavy load, we should be fine, even with the 36 inch width. Also, the back cleat runs the full length of the shelf, offering more support. I used a stud finder to find the studs in the wall and then pre-drilled pilot holes and screwed the one by two supports to the wall, making sure that each cleat was level and even. I like using an impact driver here instead of a drill because it packs a little punch, but you do have to stay in control of the tool or it can easily get away from you. Once the cleats are secured to the wall, it's just a matter of laying the shelves in place. You can screw them to the cleats if you want, but it's not really necessary. You may also want to caulk the joints for a seamless, finished look. These shelves are 16 inches apart. I did this because most of the baskets I use are about 12 inches tall, and I wanted to make sure to leave enough space for that. Now, let's move on to the other closet. I put a top shelf in here and then a closet rod below it. Because there were no studs where I wanted to place the pole sockets, I used a 1x4 for the cleat so that I can screw the 1x4 to the wall using wall anchors and then I can screw the pole sockets to the 1x4. Then I just drop the closet rod and the melamine shelf into place. How's that for quick and easy? Finally, to hide these unfinished edges, I measured and cut 1x2 trim and glued and nailed it to the front edges. Would you look at that? This was an easy, affordable project that really upgraded our closets. Organization is one of my love languages and I just love how this turned out. It not only looks so much better, but there's a lot more functionality now. We can officially call this guest bedroom done unless I decide to add some crown molding in here, but we'll save that for another video. I'm Jen Woodhouse, and I would love for you to like, subscribe, leave any questions that you might have in the comment section, and visit jenwoodhouse.com for more details. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. I don't know what, so like, I feel like that's, I need to do. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> yep, that's all, folks.